Hello and welcome to Classical Stuff You Should Know, a podcast about the classical world, education, and whatever else happens to pop into our minds while we have a microphone in front of us. My name is Thomas Magby and I am joined as always by Graham Donaldson. So no hidden conversation to start this podcast? Yeah, seriously. No like secret recordings? Speaking of secret recordings. Ever, ever since... You started talking about your weightlifting. I, I think <laughs> Are you like, serious? No, I'm no, oh, oh, I wish that'd be great. <laughs> I should have oh, been. Oh man, I really should have been. And our, I felt like that was too private. And just so I've said his name, also AJ Hannenberg. Hey, the creeper me. who turns on recording whenever <laughs> he feels like it. No, thank you. We were just talking about weightlifting before this. We were. Anything to recap from that? The answer is no. Good choice. That we're all those of you ripped. who don't you can know imagine us. us. Yes, we yeah. are. If you've never met us before, then just trust our description that we're all we're all red. I have yeah. Yeah. shoulders that tickle my earlobes. Yeah. They're so yeah, big. Yeah. yeah. So we are the perfect combination of both mind and body. So, yep, that's all I got. I don't have to shrug to hold a phone to my ear. I just <laughs> flex my shoulder and it <laughs> and then there. pins it. That's an odd uh, definition of like Huge yeah shoulders. You know, uh, no, I got it, but. Anyway, I've never thought of it in that way before. All right. My calves are the size of actual calves, baby calves. Oh, my God. So you're a giant is what you're trying to say. I don't Graham is also 10 feet tall. Okay. So I can't think of a witty comment to make. So AJ, you have the topic for today. All right. Today, I'm going to be talking about a book I may have hinted at in a previous podcast. I can't remember, but it is... It is called The Heroides, and it was originally publi- published by Ovid. You guys ever heard of it, The Heroides? Mm-hmm. Just by title, just by like knowing people making reference to it. Yep. It looks like Heroides. It is not Ovid's most, most popular book. Mm-hmm. What's the most popular book by Ovid, you know? Metamorphoses. Metamorphoses. The Metamorphoses, which is great, and yep. I'm sure I'll do a podcast on it Did he write sometime. The Golden Bough? I don't um, think so. Okay. N- no. Well, there's there are um, like religious studies guys who like captured that story. That's how I know The Golden Bough. Oh, all right. Never mind. I don't think he wrote it. Anyway. Are you talking about the Golden Bough from the Aeneid? Nope. From, um, it's, a. Uh, I always get this wrong. It's about, um, where, um, what's the thing that you, at Christmas time that you hang in trees and if you stand under it, you're supposed to kiss. It's, Mistle- about, mistletoe. it's about mistletoe. It's about where mistletoe comes from. Is it really? Yeah. Really? I'm thinking of the same thing. I'm probably not, hmm. but I learned about it through religious studies class at UT like five years ago. So that's why All my right. memory is great. Okay, so the Heroides translated in English would be the heroines, not mm. the drug, but as in <laughs> Good. Okay. female hero, right? And let me tell you a little bit about Ovid, and then I will move on to the book. So Ovid's whole name is Publius Ovidius Nasso. That's a name. Wow. Which is hard for us to say, so we shorten it to Ovid and yeah. make it simpler on ourselves. He was born March 20th. In 43 BC, and he lived until 17 or 18 AD, which is about 60 or so. He lived in the in the reign of Augustus, right after he had defeated Antony and Cleopatra and all those folks. So like, he lived through that time, that same time when everybody else did. I think he was a contemporary of uh, the guy who wrote the Aeneid, Virgil, and mm. so they all they are all sort of right at the same time. And he. Uh, he was sent by his dad to study rhetoric it, with the notion of eventually becoming a lawyer. His brother died uh, at 20 years old, not when Ovid was 20, but when the bro- brother was 20. And that was, I think, really hard on Ovid. So he left law studies and started traveling. Like he traveled all over, including Greece. Uh, he held some minor public offices. Uh, one was called the Tresviri Capitales, which is like kind of like a justice of the peace, hmm. right? Uh, he, they oversaw prisoners and some other things. And then he resigned that eventually, much to his father's chagrin, to pursue poetry around mm. 29 to 25 BC. Now, if you've done the math, he's between 14 and 18 when he's Wait, like... he was holding public office at... Or he was holding some sort of office at 14? Yeah, I'm wow. kind of squiffy about that. That doesn't sound... <laughs> I, I, he, he at least resigned his law, his pursuit of law. Um, I think mm. the holding of office happened later, but he, like he really decided to pursue poetry in his teen years. I mean... That's already an interesting thought is just when you hear those stories of he was studying law at 14, I usually think, ah, well, you know, I guess they just had crappier standards back then or whatever. But now I think like I I kind of feel like there are – if education is done right, I kind of feel like – you would be able to do kind of those sorts of things at 14, 15, 16. Anyway, that's, that's a whole what, other topic. Yeah, Lost Tools Learning says you're supposed to like get a job at 16. So, yeah. yeah, it's a whole other topic of conversation. Yeah, for sure. So he wrote uh, an elegy, which is a specific poetic form. Not, I know that there are elegies, which is the kind of 
serious poem you write for dead folks, mm-hmm. right? Isn't it a funeral that, poem? That's a eulogy, but there's no, also elegy. A, I which thought is, eulogy, a eulogy was a funeral speech, and an elegy is a funeral poem. Perhaps, but this isn't mm. this isn't quite that. This is a specific poetic form that the Romans used, and it's a couplet. It's written in couplets with one hexameter line followed by a pentameter line, and it's really complicated. I could go into it, but it's. It's a, a long syllable followed by either another long syllable or two short syllables, right? It's, it's either one of the two. That happens four times, and then a long, a short, short, and then two longs. And that's line one. So instead of saying you could go into it, <laughs> you are going into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going, I'm going to go directly into it. And then that's the first line. The second line is another, uh, like, two feet of the long with either a long or too short. I'll take your word for it. And then a long you. and too short, yep. and a long and too uh-huh. short, and a long. And yep. I say all of I that to stress that... Take notes. It was hard. Okay, right? yes, he, yeah. It's it's a difficult <laughs> form to write in. And if you read translations of Ovid, it's it's pretty easy flowing and easy going. But in the original language, it had held to a very specific, very difficult form that they were writing in. Although those Romans, it seemed to yep. be a, like people generally regarded it as not as difficult as writing full on hexameter epic poetry. And so it was often concerned less with big epic things and more with individual people and their experiences and what was going on in individual lives. In fact, most of Ovid's stuff centered on erotic love, right? Love between people. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the Heroides is no exception. Um, th- so he, he wrote a lot. He wrote the Metamorphoses, which is a hexameter poem in 15 books. It's really big. I'll do a podcast on it at some point. It's really fun. I'm, I'm sure we've referenced it in a few spots. And then he was exiled, Aww. In 8 AD Bummer. by the emperor. It's, Which it's, one? We still, Augustus, mm. we still don't know really why. Nope. There are a lot of people that have tried to figure it out, mm. but Ovid himself gives weird conflicting clues in his writing as to what it was. He calls it a poem and a mistake. Mm. So there's a poem that may have been a big offender, but the poem that we think it might have been was like a few years before he was exiled. So there may have been some plot he was aware of against the, the emperor. In any case... It was the emperor himself and not any judge or the Senate or anybody else that was involved. It was just like Ovid is out. Mm -hmm. And so he was exiled to Tomis, a place called Tomis on the Black Sea. And his last writings were generally concerned with, I want to come home. (laughs) Like his first few poems were talking about how the place there was really barbaric and he didn't like it and his health was bad. And then he wrote a few that was just letters to people at home like, please (laughs) advocate for me. I really want to come home. Hello, Mata. (laughs) Hello, Fada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where I we get that song at. from. Yeah, yeah. Camp Granada. Uh huh. Any more? Camp is very there it is. Thank you. entertaining. And they'll, and say, they'll say we'll have, have some fun, fun if it stops, stops raining. raining. What is it from? Um, Ovid. Oh, it's Ovid. Oh, yeah, clearly, Ovid. Yeah. clearly Ovid well, the on the tune Black is, Sea. The tune is Beethoven. No, the tune is uh, is is uh, classical is some classical piece. And then it was some I don't know, like showman in the '60s. Someone's gonna email Why do you him. Know this? Sure. Yeah, seriously. Wow. My parents used to sing it to me when I went to bed. Yeah. Um. Uh, like I went hiking with Joe Spivey. He developed poison ivy. Oh, poor guy. oh I remember and, that. Uh, and I my the rest of it. And my bunk mate, he's no sissy. No, and our 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 uh, our counselor wants no sissies, so he reads to us from something called Ulysses. <laughs> this is good. Um, I've never heard these lines. You remember. Oh, and you remember uh, Joey Spivey? They're about to organize a searching oh, party. party. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's pretty funny. Yeah, that's a, that's right. a good sign. I'm gonna have to look up the lyrics to that after this. All right, Ovid. Ovid. So banished. back to Ovid. They Rome actually officially revoked his exile, but a little too late. Uh, they did that after in he died? December of 2017. So, oh wait, wait really? Really? Yeah, no kidding. They finally <laughs> were so like, good. Ovid, you're clear, buddy. Wow. Come on, come on back. <laughs> About that. Why would you anyway? Whatever. What was their official r- right. rationale? Why would you do that? I don't. I don't know. I didn't look. Just because they like him now. I mean, he's got a good reputation now. I can see yes. why they want him back. So the, the Heroides is to repair the serious wrong suffered by Ovid. That's what it says here. <laughs> That's funny. It didn't really, feels didn't like really fix he's anything. Just famous. Yeah, Italy exactly. did this. Yeah, the Roman Empire. So the Heroides may have been one of the first books he published. There's there are some uh, some books that he published that were more concerned with seduction and that sort of thing, probably earlier, but it was one of his earlier writings. They think it's really hard to nail down exactly where his writings all came out because Mm -hmm. it's fragmented and we're not really sure when they were all published. But this one in specific is easy to read in bits and pieces because it's not one continuous 
story. In fact, it's difficult to read kind of on its own because it references a lot of outside mythology. Mm. And what the Heroides is, is it's letters from heroines to the heroes. And so you have oh, letters cool. from the female characters in books all to the male characters in books. At least that's the fo- first 14 of the poems. The 15th is one from a completely unknown female to an unknown male. We, they're not in any other stories as far as we know. So that one's kind of an outlier. And then the last ones that may have been added later were duo poems. So from the male to the female and then from the female back to the male. And so you get both perspectives. So there's a, there's a lot of people in here. There's one from Medea. To Jason, if you guys know anything about mm-hmm. Medea, mm-hmm. what do you know about Medea? Medea and Jason went on a quest to get some golden fleece, and they got it and came back. And then Jason ditched Medea to get with the king's daughter, and Medea goes crazy. Or not, I'm sorry, Medea is um, uh, spurned, and so she um, eventually kills her kids and herself. I don't remember the very end. Uh, I think she rides off on a chariot dr- with dragons in one of them and she does kill her the the girl that jason runs off with by offering her wedding clothes that are soaked in poison yep and so that poor girl dies she also affected i mean she was a horrible person in every piece of mythology except for the heroides Mm. she's not sympathetic at all yeah she's a barbaric sorceress who does all this crazy evil stuff including she wanted to kill this king and so she can she convinced him that she had the secret to returning his lost youth. Mm -hmm. And that secret was to have his daughters chop him up into pieces, boil him, and then he would be, like, put him back together and then he'd be restored. And only as the flesh was boiling, the daughters were like, this doesn't seem right. Wait a minute. (laughs) We just chopped up and boiled our dad. And she's like, gotcha. That's messed up. Yeah, so. (laughs) 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 What theme is that? Um, It's it's not not Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm, that's it, yeah. Anyway, so she's she's pretty evil, but in the Heroides, we at least get a little bit of the sympathetic note from her, right? right? Where she's, mm. you know, Cause she is because her story is somewhat sympathetic. Of it again, yeah. she trusted Jason. Jason betrays her, and then her poor life choices begin. Right, exactly, and we also get letters from Penelope to yeah. Odysseus, mm-hmm. and in that one, she sort of hints that she knows that he is staying away from home to have dalliances with mm. other women. She's like, you have a kid. I am here waiting for you. I will be faithful. Get your tuchus home, you lazy bum. And that's well, kind of... Greek mess- for tuchus? Is that... Or maybe that, that is, is Greek. That is that Greek, is good. yeah. Okay, good that's yeah, uh, great, bum good. in the Greek. Thank you. Good. Bum is, I think, the Latin. Uh, Bami- uh, yeah. Baminus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, <laughs> thank you. Tuko, tuchus, tuchus. It's a verb? Now I have lots of... in, in. I still have more questions. So I wanted to read you guys a couple of the letters, and I'm not going to read the entirety of all of them. I think I'm going to read two in their entirety and one only in portion, but all three of these are parts of the same story. That's why I chose these three. In, in the book, they're not in order. You actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump mm. forward and then I'm going to jump back. But again, you don't need to read these in order. It doesn't matter much. But there are three principal people we're going to center around. If you're a, a classicist yourself, you'll recognize most of these folks. If you're not, you might not recognize them. I'll try to fill in any of the weird stuff that you don't understand as we go. And I hope you guys enjoy, enjoy them. Let's hear it. The first is from Paris. Oh, yeah. To Helen. What's up, girl? All right. <laughs> Can you guys tell me what you know about Paris? Um, Paris is the younger brother of Hector. He is beautiful and he knows it. Oh, yeah. He, he knows he's cute. Uh, all the girls like him. He's he's a good fighter, um, but he doesn't really like getting hurt. Um, <laughs> or fighting. Or right. fighting. He's a good fighter. He just would rather not, not have people think he was a good fighter right. than actually do the fighting. And um, he's kind of a spoiled rich boy uh-huh. in many ways. Not originally. No? No, he lived on a he lived on a mountainside until he was young. Oh, until that's he gets right. Picked up by he was gods. suckled by a bear and then raised by a huntsman. I mean, strange. And he was good at sports. It's like Canadian. (laughs) He's the original Canadian. (laughs) Clearly a Northman. (laughs) And then the gods one day ask him to pick. Ask him Uh, to pick who's most beautiful. We'll get to that. So so some of this stuff is going to come across in the letter. So that's just a primer. He he comes from the Iliad and from several other books. Yeah. 
You will, the first time you see him in the Iliad, he is wearing a leopard skin across his shoulders, <laughs> carrying two spears oh. and loping in front of his armies saying, I challenge any of the greatest Greeks <laughs> wow. to fight me in one-on-one combat. So he's like combat. a tough guy, right? Me and my Calvins. And then <laughs> Menelaus is like, sure, and jumps off. He's like, yeah. let's rock. And he's like, oh. And he uh, says no. Yeah. Menelaus is real big and yeah. he sort of just tries to like fade into the army. <laughs> and, and then his brother yells at him and rightfully so. <laughs> That's awesome. So this is his letter. <laughs> To Helen. Okay. And Helen will we'll learn more about So this is before about. they're together. This is before they're together. Okay. I, son of Priam. So, uh, sorry. You have to put yourself in the position of a lover. These are... These are... I'm there. <laughs> these are stories <laughs> that... That have a lot more human emotion in them. And it's like reading the personal missives yeah. between people. It's really cool. It's, yeah. it's as if you, un, you know, found your mom and dad's love letters and then got to read all those. These, these are very personal. Ah, that doesn't sound cool. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly. Your were grandparents' your, love letters? Parents, what do you like, want? Yeah. I am now financially stable. <laughs> thus, we are a reasonable for choice. Marital. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are you willing to become a Donaldson? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Check yes, check no. no. I, son of Priam, send to you the daughter of Leda. Quick what? note on Leda. Yeah, what? So Helen was oh, the daughter she... of Leda. Now... And Zeus? Leda and Zeus... And do you know how Zeus got away with hanging out with Leda? He pretended to be a swan. He didn't pretend to be a swan. He, he became, became a swan. He became a swan. And then hung out with her. And then she, in the same night, spent some time with her husband and then later gave birth to two eggs. <laughs> they didn't, you know. Yep. These things happen. That's science, uh, you guys. That's, just, wait, that's no. just science. Wait, guys, no. And so one of them held, I think it was Zeus's kids, and the other held the mortal kids. Uh, it's either that or one was the girls and one was the boys, but she gave birth to Castor and Pollux and Cl- Helen and Clytemnestra. And Clytemnestra was the mortal. Helen was the demigod. She mm. was the, the daughter of Zeus. And so she, she real pretty and Clytemnestra not as pretty, Aww. unfortunately. So prayers for my well-being. Something that will come to me only from you. Should I speak or is my flame of love so visible to all that I need not speak and my love is all too apparent? I would prefer that it be hidden until the time came for me when joy and fear might be distinct. Could a man conceal flames when their light can be seen by all? However, I will enhance the fact with words. I am consumed by the fires of love. Now you have the words that bear my heart's message. I beg you, forgive my confession. Do not read what follows with a hardened face, but with a face that shows your beauty. For a long time now, I have been cheered because you welcomed my letter, welcomed my letter, and perhaps in time, you might extend that welcome to me. I hope that what the mother of love has decreed should come from this journey, will be, just as she herself caused the journey. I hope that her promise that you would be mine has not been made foolishly because I have set sail for your shores at her command. You should not sin without knowing, you should not sin without knowing this. I sail from my port, and no minor goddess has favored me with her protection. The prize for which I am in contest is great, but I want nothing that is not mine. She who came from Scythera has already promised you for my wedding chamber. So she who came from Scythera would be Venus, mm. right? Aphrodite. And we'll get, a, we'll get to the judgment in, in just, just a second, where this is all coming from. He's claiming that Helen is his by right, mm-hmm. by right of the gods. With her as my pilot... I left the beaches of Sigium behind, riding in a stern built by Pericles. I have sailed the doubtful ways of the ocean's flood. She it is who favors me with gentle winds and a gentle breeze. Without a doubt, she rules the sea because she came from the sea. May it be that she still favor me. May she still quiet the urges of my heart as she calms the tumult of the wave. May it be granted to me that with her help, my pledges will find their safe harbor. I carried with me the flames of my desire. This blaze was not kindled in this place. Neither a harsh storm nor a lost way brought me. It was the cause of such a voyage. From the beginning, my ships were on a course that only took them to Tenaris. And do not think that I come as a merchant, plying the sea lanes with a hole filled with goods. What I have may the gods keep. Nor have I traveled to see the sights in your Greek towns. The kingdom from which I sail has cities that are richer by far. Wow. (laughs) Rich kid, right? (laughs) It is for you that I have come. It is you whom bright Venus promised for my bed. You alone were the one I desire, were the one desire of my heart, even before you were known to me. You were in my mind before I saw you with my eyes. Rumor first brought hurt to me. But let it not seem odd that I am in love from so far off. With a bow so strong, the arrows of love were able to find me. So said the fates. You must not refuse to heed their decree. Hear the words I tell you. 
words that are true and faithful to them. And this is where he goes a little bit into his history. Late in my mother's womb, slow to be born, I made her body heavy with my weight. In a dream, she seemed to see a vision that she gave birth to a great blazing torch. Terrified, she awoke and told the fearsome vision from deep night to old Priam, who quickly told the dream to his prophets. One of these sang that Ilion would be burned by flames of Paris. That was my heart's torch, and I tell you, it has come to be. My beauty and my wit, though I seem to all low-born, were signs of my noble birth. In the wooded valleys of Mount Ida, far from footpaths and shaded by pines and holm oak is a place where slow-moving sheep have never grazed, nor the nanny goat that clambers on the cliff, nor the ponderous cattle. There I was, resting against a tree, gazing down on the walls and high roofs of the city of Dardanus, that would be Troy, and the sea with, when much to my great surprise, I felt the earth shake as though many feet walked on it. My words are true, though hard to believe. And there appeared, carried on swift wings, the grandchild of great Atlas and Pleione. I could see this, now I may tell it. The god carried a rod made of gold, and then three goddesses, Venus, Pallas, and Juno, which are the Roman names for which three goddesses? Aphrodite. Yep. Uh, uh, Hera. Hera. And Diana? No. Uh, I was, I was, oh, our, um, uh, Athena. Athena, yeah. So three goddesses all showed up. And they set their delicate feet on the turf. My hair stood on end. I trembled in lost speech. Do not fear, said the winged messenger. Who'd that be? Winged Hermes. messenger. Hermes. You are, the, you are the final judge of beauty. End the contentions of these three goddesses. Decide which of them has such beauty that will conquer the other two. He called on the name of great Jove, that I might know there was no escape. And then he returned through the ethereal paths to the stars. My frightened heart took comfort. I became bold enough to study each one of them. All were worthy. I sighed because only one could win. Still, one of them pleased me more. You must have guessed. It was she who causes love. Every one of them wanted to win. They tried to sway my judgment with splendid gifts. Loudly, <laughs> Jove's wife offered royal th- thrones. His, <laughs> I like that he adds loudly. loudly yeah. I'll give you thrones. <laughs> okay. uh, his daughter pledged victory in war. How could I choose between power and a courageous heart? But Venus smiled sweetly. Paris, do not be convinced by these, because both will bring to you worry and fear. My gift for you is the gift of love and the daughter of Leda, more beautiful than her mother, come into your arms. So she spoke. Both, with both gift and beauty approved, she, the victor, returned to heaven. While this was happening, perhaps because fate wished to see my prosperity, I was found by all the right signs to be a child of the royal house. After a long time, the son returned to his right home, and the house rejoiced as Troy made the day of a feast. As I desire you, women have desired me. You can have what others have prayed for. Not only the daughters of princes and lords, even nymphs have felt pangs of love. Which beauty is greater than Oenone's, who I will explain as we come. So remember that name, Oenone. After you, there is none more proper than she to be the bride of great Priam's son. All right, we're going to stop there on his. So what, what do we know about Paris so far? How do you feel about this guy? He's like really into himself. Like that last part. Like, isn't he talking about lots of people liked me, but you, you're the one who gets to be with yeah, me. Girl, yeah. I'm so cute. Yeah. That's not great. I, I remember Athena and Hera, not just like you're going to do well in war and you're going to get thrones, but like much bigger than that. Like you will have all of Asia. Yeah. And inclu- presumably that also includes Troy. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and she, <laughs> yeah. Uh. It, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me why he would refuse courage and prowess in war or th- the thrones of the world. Because if you have the thrones of the world, pretty ladies aren't exactly hard to come by. Because he wants this pretty lady. I don't know. And that's why he's a red-blooded male, right? He he doesn't want just any woman. He wants the prettiest. And the prettiest was Helen and widely renowned to be Helen. Mm -hmm. And so that's what he wants. He wants one lady and he wants her. And that's what he was promised. And so he's sort of claiming that as he sails to see her. Yeah. Um, So that's that's him. And I'm going to the rest of his is is quite long. So I'm going to skip the rest of it. But we are going to move on to Helen's. And this is in response? This is in response to his letter. I think it came a little bit later, (laughs) later than just that letter's arrival. And I'm going to read the whole thing of Helen's. I wish I had, I wish I had some sort of lady to do this for me. 
or like a lady voice. It seems appropriate that I wouldn't be reading both. Don't do a lady Please voice. Please don't. I won't do it with a lady <laughs> voice, but you know, I'm just saying like it, the production value would be better if I had invited someone gotcha. to read it. So when you uh, uh, do the audio on the back end, just like kick your voice up an octave. How does that sound? <laughs> That's That would sound hilarious. Yeah. I can try. Okay. <laughs> this is a terrifying idea. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, was there anything in there you guys are confused about? Who that one guy is that you said to think about? Okay. Ononi. Yeah, that's a, that's a name you have to remember. Okay. That was a, a nymph he was referring to. Mm. And the, the stuff with the goddesses, if you are sort of new to the whole Iliad scene, I probably ta- talked about this when I did our, our intro to the epics way, way back when. But one of the reasons that the Trojan War happened was because Paris stole Helen from her husband. And he got Helen because... Venus promised her to him as a prize. And this was all a big, to to all, like all of that was to resolve an argument between these three goddesses about who was the prettiest. And that started at a wedding because somebody had tossed in a golden apple that said for the fairest. And all three of them were like, that's clearly me. I want the apple. And then they of course had to solve it. And Zeus being the wise old father that he is said, I will not have any part of this. (laughs) Exactly. I don't want either of my daughters or my wife angry at me for all of time. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and pawn this off on a mortal. And that's what they did. Yeah. And he just, a a mortal that had a reputation for good judgment. And that happened to be Paris. Right. Or at least good judgment in terms of beauty. Hmm. Mm Hmm. And the person who threw the apple. No, no, no. It was good judgment otherwise. Oh. Be, he had earned it because he used to have a prize bull that that he claimed couldn't be beaten by any any other bull in bullfights. Mm-hmm. And then Ares caught wind of this and was like, I'll, 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 I'll beat, beat your bull. bull. And he came down and then became a bull and then, of course, trounced it because he's the god of war. And then, but instead of, he, uh, Paris had promised a golden crown to whoever could do it. And... They thought that as a mortal, he'd be like, well, it wasn't fair. You're a god. I'm not going to, and, you know, renege on his offer. But he didn't. He was like, you've won. You've won clearly. And here's your golden crown. And so for that, got a reputation for good judgment. It wasn't mm-hmm. just for beauty. But, okay. So this is Helen's response. Since my eyes have been outraged by your letter, oh my god. <laughs> there is now no glory in silence. <laughs> you... Isn't that a great way to start? It's such a good, yeah, that's so good. <laughs> you, an alien, have broken the sacred law of hospitality so that you might trifle with a lawful wife's faithfulness. Surely our shores of Tenaris gave safe landfall when you were battered by wind-torn tides, and though you came from another race, the doors of our royal house were not shut against you. After such a welcome, your actions have become a most grave offense. Did you come as a guest or enemy? I do not doubt that though my reproach is just, you have decided that it is crude. Then let me be rustic. I will keep my honor that my life can be lived without fault. Though I do not let you see a gloomy face, nor sit with wrinkled brows, my good name still remains, and I live my life without guilt. No secret lover brags about me. So I wonder why you have such confidence in your scheme. What gives you reason for hoping that you might one day share my bed? Because Neptune's hero captured me with such violence, must I now conclude that since I have been stolen, it is right that I be stolen a second time by you? She is there referencing an early kidnapping by Theseus. Oh. Stole her when she was, I think, 14. Wow. Really young. She, like, her her beauty was so legendary, it made heroes just be like, Rah! and had to kidnap her. Yeah. Right? So she's like, because I've been stolen once, you think it's going to work a second time? Like, is that why? Mm. Poor Helen. I know. Yeah, she's she's had a rough life. Had I been enticed... I would not be blameless. I refused him nothing except that I refused to give him my consent. But he did not reap the crop he desired. I returned untouched, except by fear. Though a man with no shame, he took little but a few kisses I could not prevent. Beyond that, he got nothing of mine. But you, in your depravity, would not be content with so little. May the gods help me. That man was not so evil as you. Wow. I was returned and untouched, and his modesty reduced the guilt that should have been his. The foolish young man willingly repented of his rash deed. Did Theseus repent that Paris might follow in his steps so that my name remains always on men's lips? But I'm not offended. Would anyone become angry with a new lover? I only hope the love you profess is real. Huh? That was a big left-hand turn. Right. Yes, it was. (laughs) Way to catch on, on, (laughs) boys. You may be certain that I know my beauty is quite good reason for confidence. But I must harbor my doubts because a too hasty trust will injure a woman, and they say you cannot be trusted. Hmm. You argue that others yield and a woman of chastity is indeed quite rare. Why should I join that crowd to benefit you? 
If my mother seems to you to be an example, and if you think that you might sway me by citing her, you are wrong. Those are par- portions we skipped of, of Paris's letter. Her downfall came by deception. Her lover was hiding within a blur- bird's plumage. That's a reference to Zeus being a goose. Oh, yeah. A swan is different than a goose. <laughs> Thank you. True enough. True enough. That's Although stuff we got wrong. I, you will occasionally see statues and paintings of the Lita swan thing, and they, they're very confusing unless you know the mythology. You're yes. like, why is that lady <laughs> is hugging that, that <laughs> giant swan? Swan. Yeah. It still looks like a goose to me. Yeah. Huh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Your sweet siren song. (laughs) 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 If I fell, I could plead no ignorance. No, there would be no doubt to mask my crime. In good faith she erred. She herself paid the price. For what Jove would I say, happy fault. And you go on bragging of your descent, your distant forebears, and your royal name, but my house glories in its nobility. I say nothing of Jove, my husband's ancestors, or of Pelops' glory, son of Tantalus or Tyndarius. Tricked by the swan, the bird she took to her breast, Leda gave me Jove as my father. So I guess he was sort of citing, like, check out my royal lineage, girl. And she's like, who who cares? I'm the daughter of a god. All right. Now tell us the first beginnings of your race, of Phrygians, Priams, Priams, Laomedon. I revere each one of them. But he who is your greatest glory and fifth from you is first among... Be first before me among my ancestors. Although I do not doubt the power of Troy's regalia, ours is no less mighty. For certain, if this my native land on balance has less riches and men than yours, yours remains a barbarous country. Wow. It is true, your letter prof- proffers gifts so fine the goddesses themselves might be moved. But if I cross the boundaries of honor, I will instead have done it for you. Either I keep always my unstained name or I go with you rather than your gifts. I don't reject them. Gifts are welcome when their donor makes them precious. I prize more your love, the love that has caused your labor, the hope that laid, led you over the seas. Is this weird to you guys? Yes. She sounds like she's okay with yeah. Paris at that part. But she yeah. didn't seem okay at the beginning. Right. Maybe the gods are working their magic on her. Yeah, she <laughs> like seems mid-letter. to be flip-flopping real hard. Yeah. She'll be like, you're gross and you are come from a barbarous country, but hey, if I go with you, it's for you, not for your gifts, boy. Yeah. I can observe your insolent behavior each time our tables are laid. Though I pretend not to see, you gaze boldly at me and attack with <laughs> eyes I hardly meet. <laughs> this, this part has some awesome details yeah. about what's going on in the house as he is guest. Oh, so at this point he has... Yeah, at this there. point he has arrived yeah. and he has... Like, he, his overtures are being made sort of boldly known in the house where he is guest, which is so not okay in the Greek culture that it's shocking. Is Helen, is that Menelaus? No. Yeah. M- Menelaus. So is Menelaus right. is like in the house where he's. At this point, I'm not sure if he's gone yet. At some point he does leave. And so oh, this might be after they're... he is, oh, he okay. is gone. And so they're still at dinner and he's like making eyes at her in front of the, <laughs> in front of all the servants. And it gets weirder. It's awesome. <laughs> Though I, yeah. Uh, you sigh and then lift the cup closest to me. You drink from the same rim where I drank. <laughs> so he's flirting oh. by drinking out of her cup. Gross. Which is... That's so gross. <laughs> Well, how often I, n- I noticed the little signs your fingers made and how often I see have seen your brows send almost words, messages meant for me. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. And how often I feared that my husband too. Oh, so he is he is yep. still in the room at this point. I feared that my husband too could see so that I blushed at the signals you oh. did not conceal. How often I have murmured or not even speaking have I thought he is shameless. <laughs> yes. And what I said then was never false. And I have seen traced on the table's flat top my name spelled in spilled wine, and there beneath it what? the two words I love. <laughs> oh. Oh. You guys, That's that is my favorite part. That's he spills a little wine and then right in right Helen. I love Helen. Like Paris. <laughs> Paris so plus Helen equals forever. <laughs> it's so great. Oh, I don't like this. She falls for this? Oh, I guess. Yeah. I doubted this and let my face show puzzlement. I have learned yes. too well the language of expression. <sighs> These are the winning ways. Nope. Had I apparently this is what does it for. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. Had I sought to sin by which you might have turned my desire by these, my heart might have been made your captive. I confess the beauty of your face is without compare and any woman might with eagerness permit your embrace. Let others have joy without blame rather than let my honor pass to a stranger. Learn from me and live without pretty faces. Seek virtue by forsaking delight. Have you ever once thought how many young men must want what you desire, but are wise? 
Perhaps, Paris, only you have eyes to see. But you see no more clearly than they. Your boldness is more rash than theirs. Your spirit is not greater. It is more assured. I wish now that your swift ship had come when my hand was sought by a thousand suitors. Hmm. You would have been my first if wow. I had seen you what? then. So the history there is when when she was available for marriage, everybody came from every part of the world because she was so cute. And they, it was actually a really dangerous affair because if one guy got her, other people would kill to have her. So right. he was risking his life. So Odysseus suggested to her father that he extract an oath from each one of them that they would protect the couple in adversity, which meant that at least one of them had a shot to to get her hand in marriage. So she's saying, if you were there then, well, then you would have been my first pick. Which still seems crazy, based on these details, that she is interested in Paris. Seems crazy. Yeah. The heart wants what it wants, maybe. Guess, That's just, it it's just romantic. Spilled, that Even when he spills wine his and, wine, yeah. Menelaus never drew his love for table her. wine for me. Ah, yes. That's right. There it is. <laughs> my husband will pardon what I say. You are a latecomer now, tardy to joys already taken and possessed. With hope delayed, you seek what another man has. Even if I were your bride in Troy, never think that Menelaus holds me here a reluctant and unwilling bride. Do not batter my weak heart with your sweet words. Do not injure one you claim to love. Let me keep the place I am given. Do not shame me now by seeking my honor. You claim to act out the promise of Venus, that somewhere in the wilds of Ida three goddesses appeared naked before you, that the first offered a kingly throne, the second material triumphs, and the third said, Tyndarius' daughter will be your bride. It is quite hard to believe that heaven's own would submit their beauty to your eyes. <laughs> yeah. But if true, then for sure the rest of your tale is a made-up thing. When I am said to be the reward given you for your choice, I do not consider my beauty so great that I should ever be the finest gift a grateful god- goddess could bestow. Huh. I am content with knowing that my beauty is well, well thought of in the eyes of men. If my beauty were to be praised by Venus... I fear it would occasion envy. And she's right. Whenever mm-hmm. there's a really pretty girl, life does not go well for them. Because right? Venus is Because jealous. one of the goddesses yeah. get jealous of the praise lavished on them by men, and then they mess her up. Like, it's, it's never good to be overly beautiful in, in Greece. And to- with Helen, it's no different, right? That's what happened to me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. God, the gods what curse you because yeah. of your what, beauty? One more time. Beauty. What? It's, uh, you know, it's a curse, you guys. <laughs> So are we looking at pre-curse gram or post-curse gram? <laughs> what am I looking at right now? Well, can't you tell? Wait, <laughs> why do you have to ask that question? Touché. We're all I'm no lady. Right? I don't know okay. what ladies like. Okay. <laughs> all right. But I will make no denial. I am pleased to hear the compliments you convey. What? Apparently not. I don't understand that. The flattery works. Why should these words that I write to you deny what is desired by my mind and heart? Oh. Be not hurt that I am slow to believe you. Faith should lag in things so important. I am pleased if my beauty has been noticed by Venus, and pleased too that you thought me the greatest prize, and also that you placed first neither the honors of Juno nor those of Pallas after you had been told about the great beauty of Helen. I am courage then. I am a famous throne. If I did not love, right, right, because he was offered those two things, and if she is better, you know. If I did not love a heart like yours, I would be made of iron, but iron I am not. Believe me, though I resist loving one I have decided can hardly be mine. Why should I try with a plow's curved chair to turn over the wet shores and follow hopes denied to me by the place itself? I am not skilled at stealing love, and never, I call the gods as my witnesses, have I cleverly played with my husband's trust. As I can, excuse me, as I confide these words to a speechless page, this letter performs an unaccustomed task. Happier those, okay, so speechless page, I'm not sure there if she means like the paper is speechless. Or if there's a speechless page she has in her employ and she's like, I dictate to him and he writes things down. I'm not sure which it is, but happier those who come to such deeds with ease. I, not knowing the ways of the world, think the byways of guilt must be hard. Fear is heavy. I'm confused. All eyes stare at me. I have good reason for this. I have heard our people murmur evil thoughts and Aethra brings some of this to me. That must be one of her servants. You either hide your love or cause it to stop. Mm. But why should you stop? You can pretend. Maintain your act, but maintain it in secret. The absence of Menelaus makes me freer now, but not yet totally free. His business required a far journey. He had good reason for a quick departure, or so it seemed to me at the time. In fact, it was I, when he could not decide, who said, go soon, but quickly return. Pleased by this and convinced, he kissed me and said, see to my business and my household, care for the guest who has come to us from Troy. I nearly laughed aloud. I struggled with mirth. There was nothing I could say to him except the simple promise. 
I will. <laughs> Though he has set his sails in a good wind, bound for Crete, all things are not as you wish. Though my lord is absent, still he protects me. You know, a king's hands have a long reach. My beauty oppresses me, for as your kind praises me, the more he rightly fears. This delightful glory also condemns me. Sometimes I wish fame had passed me by. Do not wonder what, that he has gone and left me here. He has learned to trust my virtue. My face gives him cause to fear. My life calms him. My virtue is his security, while my beauty arouses his deepest fears. You argue that opportunity tendered so freely ought not be wasted. A simple husband should profit us. I am torn between desire and proper fear. I have not decided. I waver. My lord is gone. Your sleep is lonely. Beauty attracts you to me as me to you. The nights are endless, and we have met to speak. You, poor me, utter compelling words, and we together live beneath the same roof. Let me die if all does not conspire to cause my downfall, but fear still restrains me. I wish that you could compel me with honor to do what you have so vilely invited. You should have dismissed at once the qualms of my rude heart. It can happen that profit will come to those who suffer evil. I might have been forced to accept happiness. Let us resist this new love. A flame freshly lit dies quickly if sprinkled with just a little water. A stranger's love is not dependable. Let him, like him, it wanders, and when it seems most sure, it is gone. I call Hypsipyle as witness. I call the Minoan virgin as witness. Both of them left to languish in wedding beds. Unfaithful Paris, it is said you have abandoned Oenone, whom you cherished as your wife for so many long years. So there's that name again. Remember I told you to remember her? Yep. Oh, it's his wife. He was married for a while first. Bummer. And has abandoned her in favor of Helen. Yeah, it's messed up. You have not denied this. I have spent much t time making careful inquiry of you. Hmm. If you tried to be a faithful lover, you would fail because you are unable. As I write this letter, your Phrygian sailors are outfitting your ships. While you speak to me anxiously of that night you desire, the winds blow that will take you away. Hardly begun, you will leave pleasures still new. Your love for me will go on the wind. Should I come with you as you suggest and see for myself that Pergamum you praise so highly? Should I wed to the grandson of mighty Laomedon? Be sure I would not so ignore men's published words that I would let them fly over the earth announcing my shame to all. What will Sparta or what would all of Achaia and the pe what would the people of Asia, your Troy, say? How would Priam and his wife and your crowd of brothers with Dardanian wives see me? And you, how might you hope that I be unfaithful, <clears throat> unaffected by your exa example? Oh, how, how, how might you hope that I be faithful, unaffected by your example, right? If you're unfaithful, how do you expect me to be? As every alien ship is breached in Ilian's harbors, you would be plagued by fear. How often your fear will prompt anger to say, adulteress. Forgetting your charge against me is also against you. You will be the judge and the cause of my fault because you have led me to sin. I pray before something so awful occurs, may earth be shoveled over my face. All right. Uh, there's a few pages left here, so I, I don't think I'm going to read the rest of it just because I think you guys get the idea. So how do you feel about Helen after all this? Man, that's a hard one because like the letter started off really well. Right. But now it's like, I don't know. But even that, that end point is she's still fighting. I like that line of we can like a little new flame will die if you sprinkle a little water on it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, we know what happens. Well, that's the, I'm wondering how we go from that to her eventually deciding to go with Paris. Or I don't know if it's in that letter where she gets to that. Well, here's, point. here's the end of the letter. I'll read it to you. I will yield and surrender to you. You ask, no, I think not in that full sense. You ask that we discuss these things secretly, meeting face to face. I understand quite well what it is that you desire and what you intend by having speech with me. But you are too rushed. The harvest is still green. Perhaps delay will befriend desire. Enough of this. Let the written words that share my heart's secret cease their hidden task. My hand is tired. What remains for words can be said through my loyal companions, Clymene and Aethra. So she just sort of like poops out there at the end. Yeah. It seems like she started writing with the fixed thought of telling him to buzz off. And then... But... Convinced her herself. Right. As she wrote, she's eventually like, well, I'll hear you out. Yeah. You said some nice things. You were kind of a doofus at dinner. But she liked him being a doofus. Mm -hmm. So you drank from my cup. <laughs> so gross. Anyway. I don't know. She's got, he stole my heart. She's paying attention to him. Yeah. She's paying attention she's to her. her. Yeah. But she speaks, she speaks well of Menelaus also. Says mm -hmm. that like she's happy there. So why should she do it? Besides the fact that the gods said it was going to happen. I, she does like Paris, right? Yeah, it's 
it's referenced strangely. It's she talks about it in the Iliad as though Venus stole her wits away. Like they blinded her to what was really going on and they made her stupid. Hmm. And she made a really dumb choice and did a really dumb thing. But then even at the same time, Paris would be like, oh, that's really rough, girl. Let's smooch. And she'd be like, okie dokie. And so it's not like she has fully come out of it, you know? Right. And I think that beyond that, if he wanted her, he, it was, he was going to take her one way or the other. But it's implied that she did go willingly eventually. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, the gods changed her mind, right? Do you think Ovid's doing that? Do you think, like, that those changes that we see in the letter are the gods changing her mind? Or do you think if he did that, he would make it a little bit more obvious? No, I think this is just a really masterful portrayal of a woman's heart who is conflicted and wants to tell this new guy to buzz off and be faithful to her husband, but is torn by a lot of desire. Mm -hmm. And she's wondering what the people are going to think. She's wondering... How they are, you know, when when it, you are both getting together with infidelity, I've I heard a phrase that you can only despise one another, hmm. and uh, we see that play out in the Iliad. Like they are not friendly. She hates him, and he is just sort of thinks of her as like a beautiful play toy, and it's you know they just don't like each other that that much. It's probably one of these things where like the longer you stay, the longer you sort of entertain the idea, even under the guise of here are all the 10 ways why we're not going to do this. And then like goes through all of them. Number one, even though you're handsome, blah, 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 blah. Number two, even though you said those really nice things and let's t- say what they were again, you know, like the longer you're still you pretty handsome and mm, pay attention to the me. The longer yeah. you entertain the idea, the more, the more like, or the, 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 um, the less sort the more of purchase it has. Yeah. The more yeah. purchase it has or the less, you, the more you sort of inoculate yourself against the, the badness of it. So that's what is happening in the letter. As Maybe she keeps as, she, about as it. she keeps sort of going through it, and she's like recounting everything. She's like, "That was kind of sweet that you did that. That was kind of sweet that you did that." Yeah. But no, and then yeah, hey, it, don't, hey, don't, yeah, hey, what would they say? What would it really be like? <laughs> I'm serious, but what would it actually be like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So she does go, and they get together, and it's the cause of the entire Trojan War, right. for listeners who don't know the history. And is eventually... It just, is it just those two letters, or do we have another one between we have those a, two? Oh, it's not... This one actually happens earlier. Oh, cool. And yeah. this is not from the two of them, it's from Ononi. Oh, really? Aww. That's cool. So this is from the abandoned nymph that lived wow. as Paris's wife for so long. Wow. I'm okay. telling you guys, these are That's like cool. heartbreaking uh, letters. Abandoned nymph? That's the new band name right there. <laughs> Okay, great. <laughs> and her history is especially tragic, and I will tell you what becomes of her after I read a little bit of the letter, because we're running short on time, so I'm not going to go too far into this. I think you'll get the tone pretty quickly. Okay. Will you read? Does your new wife forbid? <laughs> read on. No Mycenaean has written this. Rather, Ononi, the fountain nymph, well known in the Phrygian woods, writes these words and complains of the way you, my very own, if only you will permit, treat her. What God opposes my desires? Is there some guilt that will not let me be your own? If one must suffer, one should suffer calmly. But undeserved pain is much more sad. You were a nobody when you married me. I was the daughter of a great stream. You are one of the sons of Priam now. But then, with all respect, you were a slave. And you were held captive, and I was a nymph. But I was content to marry you. Right? And this is before they knew he was royal, right? He lived, like I said, yeah. raised by a farmer, suckled by a bear. And this, at this point is when she decided to get together with him. And that, like, to have an immortal nymph marry a mortal was a step in itself. So he finds out that he's the son of Priam, like, because of the stuff with the gods? Like, or he finds that out after? He, I think he found it out prior. Okay. okay. Uh, I, could, I could be wrong on when that judgment happened. I think he found it out, like, the judgment happened after he found out he was... A son of the yeah. the royal line. Yeah, okay. Because that happened with a bullfight. He was supposed to bring a bull as a prize to a, the greatest competitor. And so he's like, I don't want to lose my prize bull because they, they ordered that it be his. Yeah. And so he went and competed and he was so good at sports. Everyone was like, he's got to be royal. Huh. And then they found out that it, what he really huh. was. Okay, cool. Yeah. With our flocks, we took our rest beneath the trees on couches of fallen leaves and grass. Often we laid together on hay or straw in a hut that kept the frost away. Who led you into the mountain ranges where your quarry was hiding? Who showed you the den where the wild beasts hide her newborn cubs? Many times I have hunted with you. I have helped you place the hunter's wide mesh nets. Many times I led the swift hounds over the ridges and cliffs. After wild game, you carved my name on beech trees, 
and I can read there, O Anoni, product of your hand. As those trees grow, the words likewise grow. Grow high and straight, so that everyone will know my name and the honor that is mine. May that poplar growing beside a stream live on with lines carved by your eager hand. If Paris rejects Oenone and still lives, let the Xanthus flow back to its spring. Xanthus, hurry backward. That was a, a stream nearby. You must turn waters, flow back to the springs from which you came. Oenone has been spurned, but Paris still breathes. The Xanthus must turn back to its source. My doom began this awful storm of changed love, when Venus and Juno and unarmed Minerva, though she is more beautiful armed, came to ask you that you judge their beauty. Choosing one, you lost the other two. My heart raced, and a chill tore at my cold bones when you told me this story. I sought advice, I was afraid, from the old and wise. All agreed with my fears. There could be no doubt. It was clear some evil threatened me. Furs were cut and hewn, a new fleet was readied, and ships were launched on the deep blue waves. Your tears fell when you left. Do not deny them. Victims of grief, we wept together. Your arms held me closer than a clinging vine holds the elm. The wind was right, but you insisted that it was not. Your comrades smiled, and you returned to kiss me again. It seemed that your tongue could never say farewell. A light breeze rippled the idle sails on the rigid mast. The oars made the sea white. My eyes followed your departing ship, and my tears fell down from my cheeks to the dry sand. I prayed that you might return swiftly, and I begged the daughters of Nereus to hurry you. It would be my ruin. I knew that prayer could accomplish your return, but instead my prayers helped a rival. A great rock looks down on the ocean. The waves break at its base. It is a mountain. From its peak, I was the first to see your sails. My first desire was to rush to you. Patient, I waited, and soon I saw something purple in the bow. I was worried. You had never worn such a color before. The breeze quickened, the ship came to shore. My heart shivered when I saw a woman's face. This was not enough. Why did I stay? I must have been mad. You held her in your arms. I tore the clothes away from my breasts and beat my hands against my flesh. My long nails tore at my tear-stained cheeks, and my cries filled Ida's holy land with their sad lament. I took my grief to the barren rocks. So may Helen grieve, and so may she lament when she is deserted by her love. The pain I endured was brought by her, and she should suffer then as I suffer now. It seems your taste has turned to women who leave husbands to follow you on the sea. Wow. When you were only a poor shepherd, you were content with no one but me, your wife. I am not impressed by your wealth, nor am I touched by the thought of your great palace, nor have I the least desire to become one of the many wives of Prime's sons. Prime could not scorn a nymph as his son's wife, and proud Hecuba would hardly need to hide her relationship with me. I am worthy of becoming, and I wish to be, the wife of a powerful man. My hands would be a scepter's ornament. Do not scorn me because we lay on, a beach, on beach boughs. I should have a purple marriage bed. My love will not injure you. It brings no ships to punish you. It conceives no wars. And I think that's where we should end mm. it. That's right? awesome. Because that, yeah. that did end up in a war. Isn't that just like... It's heartbreaking. Golly, it's heart-wrenching. And the worst part is that she was devastated by him leaving her absolutely crushed and but she was really good at the healing arts of herbs and so when he was shot by the arrow of philoctetes who was the guy that eventually killed him he he got hit by this arrow and he was mortally wounded and he he knew of one person that had the arts to help him and he went back to oenone to ask for his life and, and he went up and she said <clears throat> screw you pal <laughs> and like told him to get lost and then he turned and tried to make it back to the city and then died on the lower slopes of mount ida wow and then she ran and found him and like wept her because she 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 regretted it after she oh. told him to buzz off Aww. and so she was like i can help him and so she ran and she found him already dead huh. and then at his funeral on like his burning funeral pyre she, in grief, threw her, oh, no. herself on top of the fire. Wow. This is one of the most tragic stories. I, she is one of those characters in myth that just breaks my heart every time I think about her. It's her and Calypso that are that are the two that I just have such a hard time dealing with. Poor Oenone. Like she didn't have, she didn't do anything wrong. She was beautiful. She was a nymph. She was faithful, and then her husband just left her because of the meddling of the gods. And it is just heartbreaking is she referenced in the iliad uh no i don't okay. think she is referenced in the iliad so you don't get that story there you have to get it from elsewhere Outside. yeah but 
I, I think that maybe the best way to read the Heroides is to read mm. other books and then in the midst of other books, go okay. and read portions of the Heroides mm-hmm. just to make it really personal, right? Like if you read that bit when he lands on the shores of Troy with Helen, like, oh my gosh, so heart wrenching. Mm. Or then the moments so before- you come back from college and Thanksgiving <sighs> and your high school sweetheart's got somebody new. Yeah. Breaks your heart. Yeah. yeah, it's just so rough. And the worst is that she didn't know he was leaving to go get right. Helen. Oh, like, right. Oh my word. And then and she said, yeah, he wouldn't say goodbye. He just left. Wasn't that what it said? Or it seemed that he couldn't say farewell, meaning he wanted to stay. Like yeah. he just didn't want to say goodbye. And then yeah. he went and got another lady. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's how I recommend you read these is figure out where they could kind of slot into the stories. And then if you're ever reading those stories, you can toss these in, which is, I think what I plan on doing with uh, the metamorphoses mm-hmm. when I read it is just when I hit those stories, I'm going to read them in. the Heroides and kind of sort of supplement like that. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd be, I'd introduce it to you. Those are great. If you want to read like some cool old love, love notes from uh, old, you know, old mythological people, this is a great place to start. My heart is sad. Yeah. yeah. We got a lot of stuff wrong. You want to pull some of them up? Yeah. Do you have any of them in front of you? Now have a timer in front of me. Mm. Do you want me? Um, hey guys, see. I got a computer. Give me okay, a sec. Let's remember the things that we've gotten wrong recently. Oh, we probably got the name of the yellow book wrong right. from Dorian Gray. Mm-hmm. Apparently. <laughs> that is an email I remember. Um, that's oh, I, What's I, our password? I'm not going to say it on air. <laughs> you should, though. <laughs> it's a horrible idea. Riveting, riveting radio or riveting podcasting. Um, yellow book correction. Um, yeah, maybe you got it there. I'm trying to... Wilde was actually baptized Anglican, so... Mm, and then converted to Catholicism. Score oh. point one Anglicans. Got it. <laughs> you can have them. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, uh, I don't remember. Oh, Maudlin. And oh, yeah, we, we pronounce British things totally wrong. Yeah, that's, that is that. That is a recurring theme at this point. That we pronounce British things? Well, yes. What do we say? We probably said Magdalene. Yeah, that sounds right. I If, you, if, it's, if it's pronounced Maudlin, don't put a G in it, Brits. Was, um... Is there something from a DM on Twitter? No, that was the same one about Maudlin. Wow, there's so many of these. Um, no, all the other emails just say we're perfect. Oh, so. that isn't that great. Hey, all right. Good for us. Yeah, Maudlin. Um, and, um, there's probably more. I Sorry, I'm just playing these emails. Oh, Thames. That's wild, Apparently though, calling the river, the river wrong. What did the, I call it? Thames? Or I call Thames? It, it's Thames. River, I, call, Thames. I call it the Thames. Or the Thames. That's probably what it is. I yeah. probably put the long A on it. Uh, a G-L-O-U-C-E-S-T-R if we talked about this one Gloucester Gloucester what did I say it's pronounced Gloucester not Gloucester 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 not Gloucester, Gloucester. oh Gloucester versus Gloucester Thames not Thames uh yeah anyway I the Gloucester thing I blame my Canadian nasal, my <laughs> yes, Canadian naturally. nasally accent sure naturally big flag <laughs> Gloucester <laughs> <laughs> yep sounds about right and all the other emails are just Pure praise. Well, perfect. Okay, good. Problem solved. All right. This has been Classical Stuff You Should Know. You can find us online at classicalstuff.net. You can find us on Twitter at classicalstuff, C-L-S-S-C-A-L, stuff. You can email us at classicalstuff at veritasacademy.net. And we've already told you the classical stuff we got wrong. So this has been another episode of Classical Stuff. This is Graham, AJ, and Thomas signing off. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Bye. Go write a love letter. But not to me. (laughs) 